Um, and the reason I included the and hopefully only, I, I would like to believe that from next year, um, things will will go back to normal and we'll be able to to have a proper Olympiad uh, because it, the online version wasn't perhaps as, 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 I wouldn't say not as interesting, it was pretty interesting, but it wasn't the full experience uh, as someone who also took part in the 2019 Olympiad. That uh, that took place, you know, in person in in, in Hungary. In fact, it was in in a place called Kesthely. But we're more on that uh, on a moment. In a moment, first and foremost, let's uh, get to how this uh, this GECAA, as it's called, was was proclaimed in the first place. Um, the the fourteenth IOAA, that's International uh, Olympiad on Astronomy and Astrophysics in Colombia, was cancelled. Uh, because of the coronavirus pandemic. It was due to take place in September 2020, but it was cancelled, uh, unfortunately. So what happened instead was that the, um, the, international, the, the international committee decided to transfer the competition online, and they called it the GECAA, which stands for General E-Competition Astronomy and Astrophysics, and it was going to take uh, place on a, on a weekend, only during one weekend in September, um, the, that was going to be the, the uh, sort of um, individual competition. The team competition was going to be actually longer and uh, I'll get to more details in a minute, but um, there were the International Committee had special help from, from the Estonian, uh, from the Estonian sort of uh, committee on, on the Olympiad for some reason, I don't know why it seems to me that they, they volunteered, but, um, they, the, quite a few names of organizers, uh, as I saw, were Estonian. Um, so I, I, I don't um, don't know the exact details, but they had a, they had a, a special purpose. Uh, I can say that now. Um, this is very interesting. The um, astronomy Olympiad was actually the only one uh, to be replaced by an online competition instead of cancelled. Math was cancelled, physics was cancelled, chemistry was cancelled, but astronomy for some reason, well, not for some reason, astronomy was, was carried, carried out in line, uh, thankfully. I'm not 100% sure if all of them were cancelled, but I'm sure that the vast majority and the most important ones were. I was going to check this, I wrote it before checking it, and I, I said, okay, I'll remember to check, and I didn't, so please do correct me if I've missed uh, missed an Olympiad that did also take place in line. But I, I can be sure about the big ones uh, that they were cancelled and that astronomy obviously took place in line. This is the, this is the logo of the GECAA. Um, I'm not quite sure if that's supposed to be the Lyra constellation that they put behind the letters or something else. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm assuming that must be. Um, anyway, so you might uh, be quite curious, how does a virtual Olympiad function? Uh, now, the way it happened was in Cyprus, we all went, um, all, all of the members of the team uh, went in one, took, uh, had, had several meetings in one room, one room that had a camera at the front, and uh, we were being videoed and the video was later sent to the um, international committee to make sure that we weren't cheating. Um, in fact, it wasn't actually even sent later. It was actually sent, uh, at, it was actually streamed uh, for them uh, in real time. So uh, I'll show you a short video of, uh, of what was going on. Um, as you can see, this was September. We weren't wearing masks because the situation wasn't as bad as it is now. Um, as you can see, we've got uh, computers in front of us and I'll explain details about how that worked in a, in a moment. You can see we're calculating. Um, so yeah, that, that was basically it. Um, now in, in bigger countries, this is quite interesting. Um, some, of the, the, well, not some, the contestants were, were allowed to sort of take the Olympiad from, from home uh, and uh, were videoed by their own computer to ensure that they weren't cheating. Uh, which does make sense because if you think about places like America, for example, where you might have someone from New York and someone from California, uh, especially under pandemic conditions, it would be quite difficult to get them in one single room to do the Olympia together. 
Um, so yes, um, now the questions were, were handed out on, on paper. They were sent to the team leaders of the, of the Cyprus team and they printed them and gave them to us. And what happened was that uh, we would enter the answer, we would do other workings on paper and then enter the, the answers online. And then we would give our workings to the team leaders so that when they had the moderation uh, meeting, meeting or not moderation, what's it called? The, um, whatever it was called, you know, standardization and everything uh, meeting uh, with, with the team leaders around the world, they could uh, sort of say, oh, you know, this person here may have gotten the answer wrong, but uh, he or she did some calculations that were in the right direction. So perhaps they could get uh, like two marks out of the four or the five, um, something like that. Um, and they were they were also eventually sent uh, to the to the international committee to make sure that the team leader, leaders were in line. Um, so this is what the the computer the website on the computers looked like. Um, you can see there it's it's a question. We also had it printed on paper, and you, you can see there that you've got those bars where you can uh, you can enter answers here. And these are the answers, and you can see that they're green. They turned green. That means they were correct. All that obviously happened after the competition ended, not in real time. Um, if if someone got it wrong, it would be red. Um, so this is what the I don't know. I yeah. I hope you can see it. Uh, this is the uh, workings that we had on paper. The workings we did on paper, um, and uh, as I said, those we gave them in at the end. Um, now, I would like to uh, carry out a bit of a comparison between the IOAA that you do in person in, in another country or whatever it takes place and the GCAA that took place online. Uh, I'm going to use um, the 2019 IOAA as, a, as an example because I took part in that one as well. It took place in, in a small village in Hungary called Kestre. And this was the, the schedule for, for the 2019 IOAA. In contrast, GECAA had this schedule. You can see there is a difference between the two. The latter is much more condensed, um, apart from the team competition that, uh, as you can see there, um, day 10 to 18, you see team competitions over eight days, it's quite a lot. But apart from that, it is quite condensed and much, much simpler, not, not too many things, other things um, going on. Um, now, the theory papers, um, you can see that the IOAA theory papers were around 12 questions, uh, and you were given five hours to complete them. And uh, this is an, an example question that from the 2016 one. Um, as you can see, it's quite long. It has quite a few parts to it. GECAA, on the other hand, had eight questions only for some reason, and you were only given three hours. And this is another question. This is one of the questions we saw this year. Uh, it was quite interesting, this one. I liked it. It was with the flat Earth, uh, trying to disprove the flat Earth a hypothesis through thermodynamics. But as you can see, it's much shorter and doesn't necessarily mean it was easier. Uh, but it was, it was more straightforward, is what I can say. And you can say there that they jump into the solution. This is the soft paper. I couldn't find the original ones for some reason. Um, but as you can see, it's, it's, it's much more um, succinct, uh, perhaps, um, than the, of course, the other uh, integral part of the, of the competition is the data analysis, uh, quite important in astronomy. In IOAA, it was always two questions over the years, they completely the same. Um, and um, in 2019, we were given three and a half hours. In previous years, I think they, they would give them more, I think four hours. Um, and this was one in, uh, in 2019. This is a quite interesting question. They took it from a paper from Nature. It's got to do, it's a three body problem. Uh, it completely blew my mind. I probably got one or two points of the 90 on this question. It was way beyond me. Okay, maybe not one or two points, but I didn't do well at all. It was not for me, let's just say, at the time. Now it does seem easier, obviously. Um, GCAA, on the other hand, had three questions. So there's actually an increase here from two to three. And you were given, we were given the exact same amount of time um, in contrast to theory where the time was shorter. 
but again, the questions were, they were much more straightforward, much, much, perhaps not simpler, but um, much more succinct. Uh, not too many parts, not, not a lot of, of um, going off on tangents. It was, the, was a smoother question to navigate, smoother questions to navigate. Um, this is quite an interesting one, the hypervelocity stars. Um, in fact, Mr. Um, um, Mr. Keliri is one of the two team leaders for Cyprus, said that the, the first, uh, first part there, part A, that you see seven points, was actually in one of his, of his um, exams when he was doing his master's. So that shows you that even, even if the questions are simpler, the level is, is still quite high, like it was with IOAA. Um, so it doesn't mean that the questions being shorter means that they were necessarily dumber if I may say so, or dumbed down, perhaps. Um, then, of course, the big question about um, the uh, Olympiad taking, taking place online is uh, how did, did we do the observation? Because the IOAA had an observation, a proper observation. Uh, we had around five questions and we had 30 minutes and we were dealing with actual telescopes and we would have to point them to one direction and we would have a, a, an examiner there come and, and um, supervise. This was from 2019 here. I, I well, that, that the first, uh, the task one, I remember, um, find the scope alignment, it was, it really pissed me off. It was in Hungary, it was in next to a lake uh, full of mosquitoes, the telescopes were <laughs> absorbing the, not absorbing, but they were, you know, um, had condensation all over them because of the of the humidity. It wasn't very fun, I have to say. Um, now, GCAA, this is interesting, had four questions, uh, and we were given one hour, and it was basically the same format like the other papers. You, it was just that it, it had to do with um, we were given diagrams and well, not really diagrams. It was sky maps, really and were asked to identify various constellations. Uh, there was also quite a few questions about magnitude and apparent magnitude, which appears brighter, and we had to list them, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it, um, I have to say that observation, I feel, is kind of my weak point. So um, again, I, I must say I didn't enjoy it as much as the other papers, but I did enjoy it more than last year, I can say that. Um, now, the team competition was really, I think, meant to be the centerpiece of, of the GCAA, at least I think that's what the, the organizers meant it to be. The IOAA had, had a one question team competition. It was just one, one question. Uh, and you were given around an hour to do it. Uh, this was from, uh, from last year. It was a quiz. It, it was a bit stupid. It was more knowledge based than, you know, being able to calculate <laughs> stuff. Um, but this year, this is very interesting, we had two questions and we were given 17 days to solve. 17 days. This was one of the questions. I actually worked on this one. Spectral distortions of the CMB. I have to say, even though it, I didn't perhaps, well, not just me, the members of the of the team didn't really get this correct. Um, I really enjoyed working through it, I have to say. It really was, I felt like I was doing research. Um, it, sometimes it was a bit complicated and it was a bit, a bit of a pain having to work through certain things. And it had quite a lot of high level maths into it, the matrices uh, and uh, had actually quite a lot of linear algebra. But I have to say I did enjoy it overall. Um, this was the second question. The first question was uh, other members of the team worked on it. I have to say something about the teams. The teams were not the same, the teams for the team competition were not the same as the national teams. What happened is you would get um, a raffle, the raffle, raffle. You, you would be chosen um, various um, people from various teams, various national teams would be chosen to make one of the teams for the team competition. So they were all uh, made up of uh, various nationalities. Um, in my team, I think there was an Indonesian person, there was a Canadian person, there was an um, uh, Estonian person, 
and uh, there was someone else as well. Who was that? I don't remember. <laughs> um, anyway, um, it's beyond the point. Um, the, the teams were named after constellations. Our, our one was named the Vila team, I think, from the constellation Vila in the, in the southern uh, hemisphere. Um, and uh, so, yeah, and, and that is perhaps one of the most important reasons that such a long time was given for us, that uh, we were all around the world and we had uh, no other means apart from um, the internet to communicate with each other. So that obviously took quite some time. Um, now, all Olympiads have had other events in them as well. I mean, non-academic. Non um, in the 2019 IOAA, we had the excursions, we had sports, which I didn't enjoy very much personally, but okay. Um, we had the games we played, um, either, you know, organized officially by the, by the Olympiad or just, you know, finding other people and playing games with them. Um, and there was karaoke nights as well. I uh, tried to sing in one and for some reason I didn't go very well. Anyway, um, this is a picture from, um, from one of our excursions to a, a place called Schumeg. Um, which was a, is a castle in, in Hungary. Uh, it was a, sort of a medieval show, had the uh, horse riding and everything. Uh, didn't particularly impress me, to be honest, but okay, I guess it was fun to some extent. Uh, now, the GECAA really only had two things. They had lectures, which I did enjoy, I have to say, and it also had online quizzes. I couldn't be bothered to take part in them. I had a few other things to worry about in, in that time I was I was actually uh, applying to university in, 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 um, during that uh, period so it really wasn't a priority for me. This is a, a picture from uh, one of our lectures uh, that, that the woman that you see there um, um, it was a US astronomer she uh, took uh, took part in um, in a mission to the to the International Space Station. Uh, I found it quite interesting. There were quite quite a few other more lectures. I didn't watch all of them, but the ones I did watch, I, I did find rather 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 um, ra well. I'm trying to avoid using the word interesting again, but interesting at the end of the day. <laughs> um, so this is this is actually something quite surprising. Well, not perhaps surprising, but this is actually something quite happy. It's um, something quite positive. We had quite a big, relatively for Cyprus, success at the first GECAA. Uh, we had two honourable mentions from our team of five Cypriot students. Two honourable mentions. This is the first time that we have two. It did happen that we had one in 2018. Um, former student Hrachia Zakarian, who's now studying at Cambridge, got an honourable mention at the IOAA in Beijing. But this year, we had two. Uh, I was I was one of them, as you can see there, Stelis uh, and the other one was Ioannis Panayotu. Um, I don't know if he's um, tuned in. I, I, I invited the entire team, uh, but um, he also came to the 2019 Olympiad uh, with me as well. Um, and this is this is really something that's very good. It's it's quite an in quite some important progress for Cyprus. Um, I hope it will be continued in the future. This is the certificate that, um, that we got. You can see their honorable mention. They spelled honorable the American way, which kind of gets under my skin, but anyway. Um, so yes, there is the question of whether there will be a second GECAA. As of today, or as of last time I checked, which was a few days ago, the 14th IOAA is still scheduled to take place in Colombia in September 2021. Now, at the moment, Colombia is doing relatively well with COVID. But who will be able to travel? From which countries? What the situation will be in September? We have no idea. Vaccinations have started in many places. That's good. Let's hope that a, a difference will be made by then. But unfortunately, we don't know. So there is a chance that we will have a second GECA. That's not necessarily bad. I would personally prefer that, that things go back to, to normal, let's say, to 
having the Olympiad in person, I think that was rather more, um, it's an experience I got more out of, even, even if it, it, I wasn't so successful in it. Um, or even, even if it, I didn't enjoy it so much, I did enjoy it, but perhaps not extremely. Uh, but it was still something I, I got quite a lot out of. Uh, GCAA wasn't wasn't so, uh, shall I say, fulfilling. <laughs> so that is my presentation. Um, if uh, if anyone has a, has any any questions uh, that I could perhaps answer. Uh, hi, Stelia. Uh, hi, mm, hi Miss. Hi. Um, did you stay in touch with anyone from your from your uh, team competition? Well, oh, for oh, you mean the international people? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm curious. Not really. Not really. <laughs> um, I, I guess other people may have. Uh, that's not really. It's not really my personality. Um, I'm trying to think where the fifth member was from because we had one from Canada. Um, who was of Asian origin, um, but still Canadian. Uh, there was one from, there was one Estonian person. There was one, um, uh, oh God, one, uh, one Indonesian person. There was another one, I don't remember. It was, it was, it was because, one, yeah, sorry. Because I know, I know that um, from the previous competitor from Cyprus who got the, um, the commendation um, from Croatia. When he yeah. went to his university, he met a couple of people who had been at the Olympiads. Uh, he recognised them. Yeah. Well, when um, in the 20, 2019 Olympiad, there were people from various countries whom I sort of had developed some sort of relationship with. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would recognise them if I saw them today. But... Um, I mean, the team competition this year, I don't even know what they looked like. We never saw each other's faces. Yeah. It was, we were working through, um, not Messenger, what's it called? Another one that's more yeah. scientific. Um, don't remember what it's called now. Um, it doesn't matter. So, but it, the idea is that we didn't really, I, I guess perhaps it was set up in a way that they, we were encouraged to, to meet up, but meet up, I mean, you know, electronically uh, through Zoom or something. It didn't really happen, though. Um, so no, unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately not. Okay. Well, maybe you'll meet them again when you go to university. <laughs> it could be. Could be. And fingers crossed that you're actually going to be able to go to university. <laughs> yeah, that's another <laughs> issue. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yes. Uh, now that I have a, a good connection because <laughs> my laptop died, so I'm, I'm connected from the space exhibition here at the planetarium uh, and through my mobile I managed to get it done. Okay. So I apologize for not welcoming you in the beginning, so I welcome you now officially again. Thank and you. Uh, Alexander did, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. I would like to tell you now, oh, again, uh, in front of everybody, that we are very, very proud of you. And uh, as, the first, as soon as you sent me the, e uh, the email with the honor mention and the diploma, I felt very happy as if I was awarded. <laughs> because Thank you. it's been really very fulfilling. Uh, you made Cyprus very proud. Thank you. And it shows a continuation because Kratcha also... Uh, to be honor our honorable mission and thank you both guys for trusting us to prepare you thank for you. this. Uh, it's a great honor. Alexander, we have to also congratulate Alexander for the, the good work he did during the preparation. I think yes, it, it yes, you can say more about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to ask you something because uh, I've heard a lot of complaints from students, especially because uh, from the American Academy, especially from uh, English school, from uh, Pascal in Larnaca, I've had some complaints. When you do some, um, the, the nationals, 
Yes. They are no, uh, although I know that someone, some, the chemistry and the biology uh, national courses, they are given in English. Yes. And sometimes some of them are given in Turkish or in uh, Greek as well in, in English. But the, the physics Olympiad is, is given only in Greek and you have to tell us about it. Is, this, is it true? The, un the unfortunate truth is that the, um, F, uh, what's it called, NOC Fisicon Kipru that do both the uh, physics and the astrophysics uh, national. Yeah. Yeah. They are refusing to do it in English. We've asked them many times and uh, every time, and excuse me, but I'm going to be honest, the apology they give us is so extremely stupid. They range from we cannot find anyone to translate them uh, when we actually went and proposed people, they said, oh, but we can't trust them, we don't know them, and they may leak the, leak the papers. Uh, we told them many things. We even told them, okay, would it be possible for uh, students to get a dictionary during the exam? In fact, Hatcher, the first time he took it, requ uh, requested if he could be given a dictionary. And they said, no, which there is no logic behind this. What can a dictionary tell you? It doesn't have formulas in, the, in it. It's just the words. In fact, the A-level exams allow you, when it's not English, of course, to have a dictionary with you. The A-level exams, the A-level physics exam allows you to have a dictionary. So it, it's kind of beyond me what their logic is. I think it's just discrimination. I'm sorry. Yes, I feel the logic is ridiculous. About this, especially for private schools, and they believe it's discrimination. Mm -hmm. And uh, this uh, doesn't allow, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't give the equal rights for all students, say, exactly. science exactly. And exactly. Uh, the, yeah, I mean, if you, if you come first at the national and you don't know English, you cannot go to the international anyway. That's another story, yeah. So it's, there's no point. So, okay, we, we have to, we, I recommended it personally twice, but, I believe we have to go officially again and we'll try to yeah, do something for you guys. I, I actually told uh, Miss, Miss Dimitriou to tell them that I'd be happy to um, translate them this year because I, I mean, for the coming up, I won't be able to take part. So I could translate them because I do know the terms both in Greek and English now, but I very much doubt that they're going to accept it. They'll probably say no. The, the point is that is, what is not logical to me is that you need the English language to go to pass the internationals. So if you don't know English, so even if you come first at the nationals, you cannot represent your country at the international. So that's one thing. The second thing is that if they give at the same time biology and chemistry and other national competitions in both languages, I don't see the point why they don't give physics as well. So it's a bit <laughs> illogical, but we'll have to struggle for it and we, I believe yeah. I will find some people that they are logical enough to include <laughs> as well to help all the other students that they are not uh, so good in Greek or that they are taught the lessons in English because we don't want to diminish our language but of we want to enhance uh, the learning uh, as well because Anyway, some students are being taught this in English. So to be a fair competition for all students, all nationals, it has to be given at least in two languages. Not even to mention sometimes the, uh, the Turkish tributes are there, especially in your school, they, we have a, big, yeah. uh, a large amount of Turkish tributes that we have met with many good students, especially the formula uh, finals uh, that we are, uh, me and Katie, we are judges there, as you know, mm -hmm. um, for, for Formula One for, uh, schools. And uh, we've met many Turkish students that they are really clever and... Absolutely, absolutely. I know many really Turkish, they can do really good with English. Unfortunately. Step by step. <laughs> they don't work with logic at the end of the physical people. <laughs> I don't know, we have to find out. Um, uh, Alexander, you have to unmute. Yes. Yes, I have a question. We have a visitor here, user Panayotis. 
could this visit be the participant of an Olympiad uh, globally a competition from astrophysics? Well, we did have a Panayotis last year. We didn't um, didn't have one this year, though. I think we didn't. Uh, okay, so. Uh, I okay, I, uh, let, let me ask another I, I question. Think he's, he, uh, I think he's one of uh, the crew that is maybe preparing for future Olympiad glories. <laughs> okay, no problem. No, I, I mean, let's do it another way. If there is someone who, who participated in the Olympiad because we invited many people and the team, uh, the whole team of Cyprus as well, uh, you're welcome. We are giving you word, so welcome, just tell. Well, okay. I have one more preparation for everyone. For some of you, it could be a kind of surprise. Uh, we have new generation as well of uh, in Cyprus, and uh, uh, many people uh, visit Kitten Planetarium and Observatory, and we keep uh, educational programs. And despite of this pandemic situation, we have. Uh, uh, we still have deep connections with uh, uh, students and one of them, his name is Matvey Dubishkin, he studied not far from us in gym gymnasium of Kitty, so in the same settlement where we are, so he prepared for us uh, his talk about flights to Mars. Uh, he is going to gymnasium as we could see, so let's hear. Um, uh, Matvey, are you ready? Yes. Okay, this uh, let me see. I should share, stop sharing my. Okay, you are welcome. Okay. So, hello, everyone. Uh, and I will show my now my presentation about the flight to Mars. So, here we have the Sun, the Mars or uh, Earth orbit, and Mars orbit. And uh, we need to. Uh, move our rocket to the orbit who will transfer our rocket to Mars, like this one. Uh, this orbit is good because uh, when we made it, we don't uh, need any more to spend uh, fuel. So the, so, the first what we need is find uh, the semi-major axis, this one. To find it, we sum the um, a perihelion of orbit and a perihelion of orbit and after divided by two. So when we find it, we can use the third Kepler's law to find the circulation period of that orbit. And, and but uh, the period of which we will find with this formula is is time to from perihelion to perihelion, but we need to only to a helium. So because this uh, major axis divide this um, ellipse by two same pieces with same area, um, according with the uh, second Kepler's law, who they have uh, same uh, flight time. So I find that the rocket will go from Earth to Mars in 255 days. But the real rocket is going uh, faster than our calculated rocket. So that's because the uh, Mars orbits uh, plans, oh, plans orbits and ellipses at no circles. And also, the rocket is not going every year. This is because it uh, usually going when the plans in in opposition when the distance between them is uh, minimal. Um, we can uh, calculate the. Uh, uh, how often they are uh, happening using these formulas. So um, here we have the sidereal periods of planets. planets. The sidereal period is the time uh, which need the planet to uh, do one rotate around the sun uh, relative to the, um, the stars. So, uh, and using these formulas, we find the synodic period, the time which two planets need to to um, stay again in the same position. So I find the 
uh, opposition is uh, happening every two years, 47 days. Uh, but this for formula is working only if we uh, uh, consider that the planet's orbit is circles. But uh, um, so, but, but uh, real orbits is not circles. Uh, so the real no, um, uh, synodic period is uh, some different, like this, where the opposition in 2018 and 2020 um, uh, needed more time than two years, 47 days. Yeah. So, conclusions, the, the rocket will go in 255 days and uh, the real rocket is, go is usually spent less time than calculated rocket because uh, 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 we have some rockets who goes uh, 300 days and, and the ro rockets will usually go when the plant is in our position. So thank you for your attention and sorry my English. Okay. Very good, very good. Bravo, Andre. Bravo. Yeah, thanks. Any questions to Matvey? Yes. Uh, Matvey, how difficult was it for you to use this formula? Uh, what? Uh, how difficult was for you to use this formula? Or was it easy after you did it, some practice and learned some theory? Uh, no, it's easy. Uh, just uh, put the, the numbers and, and do. Bravo. Good job. Yeah, thanks. So when is the next best time to launch for Mars? Uh, sorry. When, uh, will be, when will be the next good time to launch for Mars? Uh, in, 2020, in December of 2022, uh, will be one opposition. Uh, it's good time. Okay, so our rockets should be should follow the instructions of Matvey. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Alexander. Uh, so, uh, yes. With us tonight, we have a newcomer, our new part of the Astero Research Campaign team, Mr. Andreas Cones. Andreas, can you hear us? Can you unmute him, please? Yes. Andrea, good morning. No. Kalispera, good evening. Good evening. How are you? I'm fine. Okay, this is a surprise. How did you experience? Can you tell us a few words in English? Something, I mean, simple, in simple English. How did you experience your first time joining the, our team for asteroids? Search campaign? My first experience as the research campaign was quite interesting and fun. Uh, How did you feel when you discovered your first asteroid, preliminary asteroid? I felt surprised and I wanted to find new asteroids. And you, ne you never got bored, huh? I remember. <laughs> you never fed up of <laughs> the heads. Uh, can you share with us what you told me when I asked you if you are bored with the reason of everything else? Uh, I just, no, I'm not. It's fine. You, you said that every test, every every new set is a new challenge and you are willing to see what's in the next one. Yes, I remember, yes? Yes. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. We had a lot of discoveries this time. We'll see. Stay go. Pretty good job. We, need, we have to we have a copy of your diploma here at Planet Saturn to show that one of our uh, <laughs> students and our friends and uh, uh, our colleagues, I can, if I may say. <laughs> We have greetings from uh, sunny California now. Uh, Lisa Mahius joined us. Thank you for joining, Lisa. 
Thank, thank oh, there you, you are. I see Lisa and Tim as well. <laughs> Hello from Cyprus. Hello. Uh, My Lisa, question we don't, we don't is, hear you. how many people will be watching? There the, we go. Hey, there you are. <laughs> how, many, how many of you plan to look at the conjunction of Mercury and Jupiter on Friday morning? Uh, we have planned. We have planned to watch it, but we don't have uh, an open to the public event, so we will do it with the family. Family, and uh, hopefully we will share uh, among the people. But we have curfew here from nine o'clock in the evening until five o'clock, five thirty, five o'clock in the morning, five thirty in the morning. We have curfew because of the COVID measures. So. We'll try to share the word, to spread the word out through the group, through the website, and maybe online. We can share links online. And we are. Uh, we hope that everything will go on well and uh, meet you again, guys, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, chase the next eclipse. <laughs> The next eclipse that we are planning to see, if possible, is in two years in Australia, April uh, we, of 2023. Yes. Oh, wow. We, <coughs> we as uh, Astronomers Without Borders, and I'm the National Coordinator of Cyprus for the Astronomers Without Borders, we have promoted a trip with Astronomers Without Borders at a special price for people who want to attend uh, to observe in Australia. So we have, uh, we have shared some, uh, some info, but the more info is coming soon. We had the live connection uh, two weeks ago about the subject. We had some uh, locals, uh, local guides, the guide, the local guide uh, who will be with us when we Go hopefully, <laughs> and uh, the guy who was in the, the, the director of the travel agency, and part a percentage of this amount of money uh, will go to the Astronomers Without uh, Reporters uh, Society, and it will be shared to thirty uh, development thirty uh, world countries for the development of astronomy and uh, space exploration. I mean, uh, for the awareness of space exploration. Jim? Very good. Very good. I was mute. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, yes. What other events do you have coming up this month? Yes, we have. And I think uh, I wanted to show next uh, screen. So th next time it will be for calculated collectors col co correctly the 16th of March. Uh, and there will be uh, again at the same uh, place, same passcode. And I believe that George may give you a more, few more ideas Mr. about it. I believe it's Mr. John Fox who will give a talk about astrophotography. We've talked about it, and I will, uh, he confirmed last time. So after today's event, uh, we'll get in touch and we'll get the new poster and uh, the new title of the talk. So, so soon we'll proceed. <laughs> yeah. We will share it on the website, we'll share it on the... And as I promised to everyone, no disconnections tonight. And we need a big applause for this because we managed. <laughs> Is for the software. George? Yes? Uh, so on Friday morning, it's going to, it's predicted to be no clouds mm -hmm. for the conjunction. I didn't check to be honest. Uh, I think you're more lucky than we are. I think, I think it's predicted to be no clouds. Um, 
from, from now, I mean, it's cloudy now and rainy now and, and not bad weather, it's, but I, I just checked and I was very pleasantly surprised. <laughs> so that's good, good news. Uh, I, I'm really, I'm really surprised that you trusted the Cyprus weather forecast, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> or have you checked online maybe no no thing? i che I checked online but the thing is the the weather forecast when they forecast rain it doesn't usually happen yeah i know it's yeah. <laughs> it's happening it's in the country when we huh? remember it's when we were fundraising for the anti-cancer society at the prominent in Lanaga, in Igudes, yeah. they predicted clear skies and uh uh, it shouldn't have been cloudy and there was a tornado and there was a heavy rain and it passed all over the place. Thank God we didn't go earlier because I saw it from the, I called, I called the weather station at the tower control of Lanaga airport 40 minutes before it happened and they said, no, nothing will happen, it will be clear, no rain. Imagine at the airport. And we're talking, it is two kilometers away from the prominent. <laughs> and I said to Alexander, Alexander, this is not the same images that I received from the weather forecast online from the satellites. Let us delay and find an excuse. Remember, Alexander, we no. didn't go and no, we didn't did set up the telescope. Otherwise, the telescope was going to be swimming until now. <laughs> It was a flat all over the place, especially at the prominent. They had something like 28,000 euros losses. The people who went there for fundraising for the Attica Society, the event was destroyed. And they did the, the, it was a total, uh, uh, I mean, <laughs> unsuccessful event because of the weather. But, the weather forecast 40 minutes earlier, even 20 minutes earlier, from the tower, Lanaga Tower Control at the airport was wrong. <laughs> Something to remember. <laughs> okay. So, Stelios, as I understood, you liked the second time participation in Olympia. Uh, could you explain yeah. how it happened that uh, Cyprus team uh, use uh, the same people from previous? Oh, yes, that's a, that's a very good question, actually. It, what they did was that they took the um, team of 2019 <laughs> that had been selected through the competition, and whoever was eligible, they, which was three of us, they told us, okay, you will be in the team again. And then what they did was that they took the results of the 2019 national competition and looked at who came sixth and seventh and they, I don't know how far down they went, until they found two eligible people to complete the five. So that's how they chose it. Uh, they didn't uh, bother doing an online uh, contest, perhaps. I believe it is because of the uh, time uh restrictions they did not have much time to not only to make new competition it's easy it's quick but to prepare new people for competition. okay yes that that is a fair point. Yeah, i believe this is the main reason why it happened like this but still it's good and could you tell us um now you participated in two olympiads <laughs> <laughs> well uh how was a uh, educational and program in planetarium helped you with it or uh, you you participated only before the first your yes. attempt well it was certainly certainly quite helpful i i'm not sure i would have gotten the um honorable mention this year without it um the the, the mathematical concepts especially was something i i learned from from there uh, that was quite helpful um as well as certain theories that i didn't know 
Uh, so thank you very much for that. And, and especially <laughs> cosmology. <laughs> oh yes, cosmology. <laughs> Even though there were there were no cosmology questions, unfortunately, I would have liked. To ah, do shame that. on them! Why did they not ask you know it? No. <laughs> well, and uh, uh, you see, for the second year now, you did not make. Uh, actually, I understand you did not make much preparations because of it passed, and you learned that you may participate abruptly. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that. Uh, this is one of reasons why you did not do much, but still you particip you participated. And if I could uh, realize, you did it by yourself. I mean, preparations by yourself. Could, uh, we, yeah. now, here we have some young students. Could you share with them the way how you prepared? Of course. Um, I of course looked at my notes from 2019. Um, that that was one of the things I did. Um, I I studied in two sort of two different units. I looked at the theory and data analysis. Um, I have certain textbooks that I used, uh, both mathematics and physics, astrophysics. Um, I solved at a later stage. I solved past papers um, from uh, previous competitions, um, and that was that was basically it. That was the main core of my of my. Studying. There was, of course, the observation part, uh, that really there is no other way of doing it. You need to look at sky maps and, and get it all in your head. That's the only way you can learn. That's the only way I can think of, at least. Okay, um, thank you. Some other questions? How, how much time you need to prepare for the, for the Olympiad? Well, for the one in 2019, if we're talking about the international one, uh, Mr. Mr. Prokofiev can tell you that he was teaching me for two months plus, I think. Uh, so it took uh, quite some time. This year, it was definitely much less. First of all, I didn't know it ahead of time, very, I mean, much time ahead of it. So I couldn't uh, study for longer even if I wanted to. But um, well, less certainly because I I had done it once already, and uh, of course my maths and my physics uh, developed as well in, independently of that. So it does depend on a number of factors. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Okay. My pleasure. Well, thank you everyone for this meeting. If you have some other questions, you are welcome to ask each other. So we have free time now. And this is, uh, uh, let's wait for George to make a an next announcement of, plan of next event on the website. Thank you all for being with us tonight. Thank you for your participation. Stegios, thank you again for making us proud. Thank you. And, uh, if I may, I can print this and put it in the in our educational class, so everyone of can. All our students can do. <laughs> of Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So, from Cyprus, good evening to everyone. See you in two weeks' time. Bye. Thank you, Lisa. Bye. 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 Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Please. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye.